let's get on with starting this aircraft up so I think we'll we'll set it I'm going to set a timer to see how long it takes me to start this aircraft up and the timer starts now so let's begin by battery switch first things first we need to close the guard on the battery switch which is located uh, up there so we're going to do that and that kicks the aircraft into life we're going to make sure that the standby power uh, guard is closed which is that one there so it's open closed fantastic we're going to make sure that the guards are closed up here for all the flight controls spoilers everything's closed there bus transfer everything is closed across that uh, wiper selectors we're going to make sure are in parks we don't want them to be drawing any power all the electrical hydraulic pumps we're going to have off right now I'm not too sure why they start uh, in an on position so that, that is a little bit confusing uh, also at this point in time we're going to use ground services and we are going to connect a GPU so we're going to do that we're going to leave the master caution with all its warnings we don't need to worry about it at this point in time landing gear lever is down at the moment so that's lovely uh, ground power is available so we are going to switch over to ground power we're going to switch this over to ground power make sure that we're getting about 116 volts right there fantastic so we are now on ground pa power um, at this point in time I am going to sort out my payload and I am going to sort out my fuel so we're not going to have that much fuel in I am actually only going to put in about uh, actually oops up oh, cancel uh, I'm going to put in seven seven tons of fuel so we're going to have seven tons of fuel currently uh, the payload is going to be nothing uh, let's say let's say we're carrying something over just just for the sake of it so that's our fuel and payload and everything done anything else that we need to do I am going to have a look at the config for this just to make sure that everything is going to be displayed the way I want it so we've got side by side that's fine that's fine I'm happy with all of them long LED strobes I don't particularly like so I'm not going to have that we're not going to have satcoms either uh, so that doesn't matter we're not going to have pulse lights uh, landing lights are going to be LED lights and we've got the HUD for the captain there although to be completely honest uh, I'm going to get rid of it because I don't, I don't think the HUD is in a state that can be used just yet on this we've got this already set to your so that's going to make sure that when I turn my rudder as you can see it turns the tiller that's really really important if it didn't turn the tiller we would be in a lot of trouble uh, throttle noise lock we're going to leave as off and we're going to make sure that the parking brake remove chocks currently we've got that as on so all of that is set up lovely for us this is all going to be real we're not going to worry about anything like that and um, we're not going to be pausing at the top of descent we've just got to make sure and manage as we go along anything else on this well we're going to look at the visual effects and everything is uh, yeah everything's fine over here we're going to hide the passengers don't need the passengers at the moment because there are no passengers on board aircraft config kilograms we're going to work in hectopascals as such in the UK we're going to do this to be uh, minimums so we're going to leave it on a barrel uh, should I do barrel or radio I'll, I'll select that uh, we've got the yoke hidden at the moment so you guys can see what's going on shocks and startup that doesn't really matter we are in cold and dark at the moment uh, this we're just going to hit that on detail and this is already syncing the QNH so when I change my pressure here or the QNH on this it will synchronize it with the first officer so that's really really important right aside from that we are good to go so let's go ahead and start setting this aircraft up right ground power is available that's good now we're going to make sure parking brake is on that's fine verify that the engine 1 APU and engine 2 fire switches are in the, these are the fire switches here they're all in so that's great if they were out they'd be sort of diagonal in some sort of fashion so they are all in this is absolutely fine uh, right over overheat detect switch is in normal that's that's one there and then we're going to go test switch we're going to check this uh, we'll take it that way first so you get the fault and then we take it this way 
and that's good. Right, so that the fire systems are operating correctly there. Right, anything else that we need to check? We've got these lights here that we can check. They're absolutely fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, anything else that I need to check here? Not that I know of. I think everything else here is good. Right. Um, APU. Let's get the APU started. Should we get it started now? I, I don't think we should get it started just yet. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to call up some ATIS for this airport. Now, what's going to happen is, as I said, this is going to show the ATIS as we are currently. So that means that the current time is uh, 2015 Zulu, so there should have been an ATIS report not so long ago. There you go, 1950 Zulu. Um, and of course we are back in time a few hours from that. So don't worry about the discrepancy there. We have this weather currently. That's the weather we've got. So we've got broken clouds. Uh, we've got winds uh, 280 at 4. Temperature 9, dew point 6. QNH 1037. So that's, that's our current actual weather in the sim, though the time is further back. So don't worry about that. Just something to bear in mind. Right. Whilst we're doing that, anything else that we want to do or need to do? I don't think so. Um, I'm not going to switch on the APU just yet, as I said. Everything else is fine. Right, let's go ahead and start this up. Now, we're going to ignore the fact that we're, our navigation data is out of date. I don't have a Navigraph subscription at the moment. I am planning on getting one, so we're going to ignore that. It's going to be fine for this flight. So. Don't worry about the fact that this is August 2017. All right, position. We're going to get this going, and the first thing we need to do is we need to go up here, and we're going to get these started. So, get those on a line, and then we're going to switch them over to nav. Switch that over to nav, switch that over to nav. Absolutely lovely. Okay. So now we get to set our IRS position. We're going to do this from the GPS. We can use left or right, and we'll pop that in. Reference airport is going to be Echo Golf Bravo Bravo, and the gate we are currently at, um, I actually don't know. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Avitab. I've put some charts in. We've got some charts. Um, Echo Golf Bravo Bravo. I'm going to jump on, not that one, uh, this chart, and this is going to tell us exactly where we are so we have parked there that's where we are if we have a look outside there you go you can see that's exactly where we are so we're at gate 70 so that's the gate that we're going to pop in let's hope it accepts it sometimes sometimes it doesn't sometimes it does it does accept it lovely so we're going to put in the route at the moment so we're going to go echo oops not clever that's already in. Echo Golf Bravo Bravo, Echo Golf Lima Lima today. So it's going to be, as I said, a repositioning flight. Uh, it's Speedbird, so it's going to be a BAW. And anyone who's watching right now, if you want to, could you give me a three digit number for the flight? If you want to give me a three digit number for the flight in the chat box, and I will pick the first one that comes up in the next uh, few seconds, if there is one. In the meantime, we are going to make sure that the voice recorder switch is on. Crowley Hammer 777. Sure, let's do that. BAW 777. Even though this is a 737, there we go. We've done it. Lovely. Uh, runway that we're expected to take off from today. Well, given that the winds are 2804, we're expected to take off runway 33. So we'll go and pop runway 33 in, and we're going to continue with our setup at the moment. We're going to make sure that at this point in time, our nav lights are on, those lights are on, wheel well lights are on. That looks pretty good to me. Right, uh, voice recorder, cockpit voice recorder and flight recorder. That's, that's showing us off. That's interesting. Uh, don't need that on. Why does that show us off at the moment? That's not supposed to be... It's supposed to be like that. What have I missed there? 
probably because the APU is not started. Uh, right, anyway, we need to make sure that uh, this light is extinguished, which is the PSEU light, and the GPS light is extinguished too, wherever that is. We don't have to worry too much about this. Service interphone is off. Yes, it is. And we've got the engine panel, oxygen panel, and all of those we're going to set up. We've got to verify that there are six greens. So we've got three greens there for the landing gear, three greens there for the landing gear. That's important. So we've got six greens. We're going to set up uh, any of the oxygen now. Our landing altitude today is going to actually be 100 feet. It's actually, I think, 80-something. And we're going to cruise up at 12,000 feet today. So let's get that sorted already. Uh, all the air conditioning should be absolutely fine, so we're not going to worry too much about uh, any of this. Once the aircraft is uh, ready to go, we'll double check these and we'll make sure everything's going on. We'll get the emergency lights at this point in time. Anything else that we need to have on or double checked? I don't think so. Check stall warnings. They work. And the airspeed ones work. Lovely. So we know that that's going to be fine. Right. Now, because it's a single pilot operation, I'm going to have to do essentially everything here. So whilst I'm doing this, I need to make sure that we're getting um, all of this done. All the extra checks that the first officer would do. So I've got to get most of those done, if not all. So we're going to just double check all of these kind of things. Flight control panel check, navigation panel check, displays panel check fuel panel set. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the checklist here to make sure that we, we've got everything going as we want. So we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, uh, we've done, we've, we're not going to worry about flight deck access today, emergency equipment's been checked, ELT light is fine, that's done, that's done, service interphone is done, engine panel is going to be set, yep. Passenger oxygen, oh God, close. Right, let's check that. So some of these, I actually don't know where they are. We've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Uh, passenger oxygen, let's find out. Passenger oxygen should be somewhere up here, right? There it is. Yep, God's close and the light is extinguished. So we're good there. Lovely. Manual gear, uh, manual landing gear extension door, that's that one there. That's fine, that's checked, that's closed. So we don't have to worry about that. And parking brake as needed. Well, currently we have it set. So that's done. Next up, we're going to go CDU. Right, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. That's all fine. Uh, we've done that, we've done that, we've done the flight number. Now we've been putting in the route. Now this is going to be the interesting one for, for the route. So on this route, I would go onto the next page and I would just put in uh, to Daventry and then from Daventry into towards London. But what's going to happen today is because it's a repositioning flight, we're not going to be climbing too high, 12,000 feet at most. And what's going to happen is we're going to go straight from a SID into a star or some form of a star. So we're going to be going straight in from uh, the Daventry 4 Foxtrot departure out of runway 23 Birmingham, I mean runway 33 Birmingham, into the Bovington 1 Charlie Star into London Heathrow, expecting probably 27 left or 27 right. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to set up the departure right now. Runway 33 is selected, like that, because we already had that set up, and the Daventry 4 Foxtrot is the one we want to do. So, if we now go. Uh, to root and we actually activate that execute that if we have a look at the legs there we go that's all set up for us and if we do that yeah that's fine that's fine and that's fine we don't have to worry about that if we go back to avitab chart and not this one but if we have a look at uh, this one this is the standard departure chart for the Daventry 4 Foxtrot or the uh, Ungap 1 Delta. So this is the Daventry 4 Foxtrot 1. So we're going to be taking off, we'll be doing it, we'll be on a track of 327. We'll go up there, we're going to go on the track of 189 in towards Trent. A distance marker 26 nautical miles from Trent. We're going to be doing a right hand turn, approximately going to be above 5,000 feet there when we're on the radial of 323 for Daventry. We're going to be flying 
118 and then we're going to turn in to join the radial the 147 radial uh, for or the sorry the 327 radial which is going to be us flying 147 degrees and we're going to be following that track all the way over to Daventry for 50 nautical miles and then we're going to be at Daventry now from Daventry we're going to jump straight into the as I said the one Charlie approach uh, so it is going to be mean that things are going to be a little bit awkward so what we are going to do as you can see here we're going to go into the arrivals and we're going to select we're going to assume right now that we're going to get two seven left now we're not going to do a transition this is something I learnt from this is something I learnt from the pilot yesterday the veteran pilot yesterday is that more often than not they don't select these simple simply being uh, or the reason being is that there is so much going on over somewhere like London you're not going to be flying one of these in it's just going to be radar vectors you just have to make some sort of assumption as to what you're going to expect so that the computer knows that it needs to do something so if you look here we're going to have a route discontinuity that's not going to be a problem uh, what we could do is we could put in Bovington there or what I could do is I could take an assumption that we're going to take in the Bovington one Charlie so we're going to bring in one Charlie up to Bovington and then after Bovington instead of having this transition where we're, we're going to be coming down and then turning in wherever we need to we are going to be vectored in in fact we might be vectored in before Bovington so we're just going to execute that now if you look at the legs page you can see it's done Bovington and then it's done that now this is where it differs from the real aircraft I believe in the real aircraft or on a on the CDU that I was using the other day but after this after Bovington what we get is another route discontinuity because there's no transition now if we look at this in plan mode like so and we step through it you'll notice that once we go to Bovington so that's a Westcut then we go to Bovington now here's where we should get into a transition where it, it loops us out and then loops us in and then wherever we need to go instead what it does is it just takes us in like that so it's just a direct and then a very sharp line over that way that's not what's supposed to happen so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to replicate that particular part of the flight what I would have done is I would have said after this I would have gone Bovington uh, I would have put in something like, oops, I would have put in Bovingdon 120 slash 25. And that would, have, that would have extended this line out that way. And that's what it would have done. And then I could have flown that line and then swung the aircraft in to this area. But unfortunately, I cannot seem to do that just yet which is a little bit just a little bit annoying uh, but we're just going to have to manage when we get to Bovington we're just going to have to manage that ourselves so that's something somebody remind me of that once we get to Bovington anyway let's go back to uh, this mode for now and continue with our checklists so we've done all of this we've done that we've done that we're going to sort out the zero fuel weight and all of that kind of stuff now so normally we can go up there and then swing it back but normally people uh, I've been told that they go back to the menu and then they select it uh, from from the main menu which uh, we can't do it here for some bizarre reason index there you'd, they'd go to the index and then they would select it from here and they would go now we'll go into a uh, performance okay so thankfully this does a lot of it ourselves um, we can just sort of click zero fuel weight and it, it should sort it out for ourselves let's get rid of that there we go we just do that gross weight it sorts it out works out the zero fuel weight for us um, normally they use for one something like this they'd use 48 tons so we're using 47 tons almost not a problem uh, today we're only going to probably be using no more than three tons of fuel 
So we're actually, in fact, we'll put that to four tons of fuel and we've got three tons of reserves. The uh, cost index is going to be 25 as a general cost index for a for most companies. So we're going to be using 25 and our cruise altitude today is going to be flight level 120 like that. Uh, it says unable cruise altitude. I'm surprised about that because it should be able to get us to that cruise altitude. So I am surprised that it can't do it. Okay, well, let's just go for flight level that then. Can you give me that? You can give me that. Okay. So I'm surprised it can't give us 120. This aircraft should be more than capable of going up to 120. But I'll check the legs. Maybe there's something that holds us back uh, for 120. Probably at Daventry or something that's keeping us at 6,000. When... As a matter of fact, we are going to be climbing uh, a lot higher, but we'll, we'll stick at we'll stick at one two uh, one zero zero. Cruise wind we're not going to worry about today, so we don't have to worry about that. Transition altitude is six thousand feet out of Birmingham, so we are okay on that. And there is nothing else that we currently require, so that's absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about there. There is this the outside temperature top of climb. We're not going to bother with that today either. We'll go to end one limit now and just make sure that all of this is done. Uh, outside air temperature we're going to set it's actually 9 degrees so if we click that it's 9 degrees. Now because we've got a long runway we're actually going to derate the takeoff so we're, we're going to go for a 22, 22k derate but we could further derate the, uh, derate the climb and derate the takeoff by putting in an assumed temperature up here so I'm actually going to put in an assumed temperature of 25 and you'll oh that doesn't like it it does not like that okay there we go let's do assume temperature of 30 then doesn't mind 30 if we do a 24k D rate do an assumed temperature of 30 it does it likes that so we're going to do that so it's going to bring us in like that so for example if I were to uh, delete this you'll see that 93.7 if we put in 30 there it, it m should make a slight difference 93.8 that's interesting again not quite as what uh, uh, what I expected uh, from this aircraft so we're going to leave it at a 22 KD rate anyway 91.6 we are going to be doing a manual takeoff today don't need this information soon so we're, we're not going to worry about that uh, in a while flaps 5 this aircraft generally does flaps 5, occasionally flaps 10, but it's not its not usual for this aircraft to do flaps 10, only on a very short airfield, but flaps 5 is normal, flaps 1, 2 hardly ever used. We're going to put in the surface winds, which are 280 at 4, there we go, runway slope we don't have, we don't have to worry about any of this anymore, we'll go back, and we'll accept these now. On the real aircraft, you have to tap this twice. You have to press that in twice to get the get it going, uh, and this one you don't. So there's there's another uh, another big difference. Okay, so that's all done. Outside air temperature, that's done. Assume temperature, it's done. That's done. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Right, trim value is going to be 4.34. So that's about 4.34. We're okay. Uh, generally, uh, you can put in 24-25%, that's what you would expect. Now, I'm going to leave this page on for for my entire takeoff. We're going to return here, we're not going to worry about that. Um, if we go back to our menu, we can, go, we can always go back to that, what do you call it? Uh, we can go back to the ATIS information. Don't have to worry about that just yet. Okay, so next up, we're going to go this. We've done the lights test. We're going to set the control panel. Now, at this point in time, I'm thinking whether we should switch on the APU, but I'm not, I'm not going to just yet. Uh, we're going to set the control panel up, up top. So we're going to set this to be V2, which is going to be 134. So we'll go ahead and get that set up 134. We're going to make sure that the course is going to be, uh, we're going to fly runway heading, which is 327. And you'll see soon what this does. 
on the PFD, so let's go fly 327. There we go. Uh, altitude, if we go to the legs page, we'll have a look at the altitude. Uh, the first hard altitude we've got is 6,000. So we're going to pop 6,000 in here as our altitude. And we're going to set our heading also to runway heading. So that's uh, 327. There we go. That's set. We're not going to switch on the flight directors or anything like that just now. Everything else is okay. That's fine. That's fine. Oxygen, yet yeah, we'll assume that that's done. Nose wheel steering guard is closed. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. Uh, lights test. We could go ahead and do the test for that. And the test for that, which is fine. And we can run this and make sure all the lights are illuminated correctly. And everything seems to be a-okay. Lovely. So we're going to pop that back to where it was. That's done. That's done. Flight instruments are checked. Okay. Yep. Everything's okay at the moment. Uh, we could go into systems. At the moment, we don't have hydraulics, so we don't have much movement. So we'll check that properly afterwards. We'll go back to engine there. We'll set our pressure right now. And the pressure was... Uh, was it 1043? It was 1043. Nope, it's 1037, I think. 1037, uh, given the elevation of of this airport. Let me have a, a look. So double check. 1037, there you go. Lovely. And we'll go back to the legs page on that. Okay, so 1037 is checked, cross-checked. Always cross-check these. And then we will change this and crank that up to 10372 or oh, 37 that is not 372 lovely that's done okay speed brake lever is down yep that's down reverse thrusts are closed forward thrust levers are closed flap levers we're not going to set that uh, just yet so we don't got to, we don't have to worry about that Parking brake is set. Start levers on. Cut off. Stabilizer trim cutout is normal. Uh, nav radio set for departure. We're looking for, I think it's 110.3 is going to be Birmingham. So we're going to swap to 1103 for this. And hopefully that comes up. We'll double check that in a minute. Uh, on on the charts to make sure we've got that. Audio control panel is fine. Seat has been adjusted. Rudder pedals have been adjusted. Seat belts have been adjusted. That's great. Um, that's fine. APU as needed. At this point in time, we'll start we'll start setting up the whole APU and everything like that. So here we go. Um, we'll check all of that for now. Make sure that's done. Window heat is on. Probe heat is off. So we'll switch on window heat now. Didn't think we switch on the window heat now, but we'll we'll go ahead and follow the instructions as as given. Anti ice is all off. That's all done. Uh, that's all done. Ignitions are fine. That's fine. All of that is fine. Yep. That's all fine. We've done the lights tests. Auto brake is set to RTO. There lovely those are all checks ADF radios we don't need transponder panel we're not going to be using today seats that's all done let's go for the before start checklist and we've got that we've got pushback okay so what we're going to be doing is we are just going to get this aircraft set up with the uh, with the other panels ready to go so I just need to pull up the right checklist for this. If I can pull up the right checklist, I will be rather happy. If I can't, that's going to be somewhat annoying. Let me see if I can find the right checklist. Uh, right. Where is it? I had it up as well. In the meantime, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look outside at 
the aircraft, see what it's looking like. There it is, lights are on. Logo light, you can just about see. Navigation lights are on. Everything looking good. We're just getting ready, almost ready to push back. We're going to switch on the APU, disconnect ground power, and we're just about ready to push back. We'll uh, cancel these at the moment. We'll check that afterwards. Let's have a look. Is this it? Let's find out if this is it. Yep, this will do. This will do uh, very nicely. Okay, so we're going to make sure that those are all off. That's fine. Um, at this point in time, we're going to switch engine hydraulic pumps back on. We're going to have trim air open. We're going to have the isolation valve open. We're going to have the reset fans on uh, auto. The packs are going to go on. Uh, fuel has been loaded. That's great. Everything's been put in. Now we're going to uh, let's see. Oops. It'd help if I didn't keep going, jumping out of this. Uh, come on. Come on, come on. Right, we're going to start the APU up in a second. So that's that's what we're looking to do. We're just going to wait a second and get it done. Just want to double check the procedures, make sure they're right. Uh, this is going to go on. That's going to go on for now. They should be ready to know that we've got. We're going to be going soon. Anti-collision lights going to go on at this point in time as we are getting close to starting this aircraft up. Um, everything else has come up very nicely for us. We're going to set this up to something that means something to us, which uh, 20 miles, I guess, should mean something to us there. And on this, we're going to actually leave this in a plan view, like that, and we'll... Actually, we won't leave it in plan view, we'll leave it in that view, but we'll leave it sort of further out. This can be a little bit closer to us, so that gives us more of a chance. Right, so the recirculation fans are on automatic, the packs are on automatic, everything's going well at the moment. Isolation valve, i tell you what, we could... We've got it open there, let's put it to automatic. Uh, autopilot, everything is fine. We are going to start the APU up. So, we'll switch on the first one of those. And let's get this APU started. Hold for three seconds. Here we go. We should see the exhaust gas temperature rise quite rapidly in a few seconds. And then once it tapers off and settles around 400, then we should be, we should be good to... Uh, we should be good to get the APU running on here. We should have a blue light there telling us that the APU generator bus is available to us. And if you look outside, you should be able to... There you go, you can hear the APU starting. And you can see the jet out the back. Or should I say the, the stream out the back. As the APU starts up. Look at that. So that's very, very hot exhaust gas. And so we're just waiting for the temperature to drop back down nicely, and then we're going to switch on to the APU. I'm just going to wait a few more seconds, though the blue light has come on. There we go, it's settled nicely. We're on that. We're going to disconnect ground power at this point in time. We are going to disconnect the GPU. Okay. We are almost ready to go. That's not been too bad. Half an hour. It's been half an hour it's taken me to start this aircraft up, but I have been talking um, and explaining things as we go. Right. So we're going to make sure the APU generator switch is on at this point in time. We're going to have the engine switches on. That's fine. Yep. Lovely. Uh, anything else that we need, we're going to switch this over to APU, actually. Yep, that's great. Should have done that first. Really should have done that one first. Uh, we're going to make sure that the parking brake is still on. It does have a tendency to, to come off for some reason. And uh, what did I want to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to go into Avitab. We need to check. Uh, what do we need to check? The frequency right now for for this airport. And that is 110.1, not 110.3. There you go. 110.1, 110.1. And that should come up lovely right there now. If we switch the course over, you'll notice that when it when it re-engages 
Uh, if it does, what should happen is that should come up with a yellow. It should turn yellow with a line through it, and that tells us that the it's it's got a disagreement with what it expects to what the actual heading is. So uh, we, we'll test that in a bit. Right, we've got a few warnings still up, but they're they're all going to go pretty soon. I assure you of that. Okay, with all that done, we've got. I think we've got all the information we need, and we are going to start calling for a pushback. I guess. I think that's the, that's the next thing we've got to do. So we're going to pre-plan our better pushback, and this is really cool. So this is better pushback, and it allows us to push the aircraft back where we want and how we want. So we're going to push the aircraft back to. Um, I think we should push the aircraft. What's that? What was that green line? That's telling us we're pretty much lined up on the taxiway lines, I think. Uh, if the aircraft could go to there, it'd be quite nice, but I think the aircraft might hmm, might prefer sort of there. That might be easier for the aircraft to do. I'm actually going to push back a little bit further because I'm not sure uh, how that works. There we go. So, it's quite happy... With that, I'm going to accept it. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Okay, so when we're ready to push back, we are going to give him a call. So, um, in fact, I suppose we should just request request the pushback now. There we go. Pushback has been requested. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Lovely. Uh, at this point in time, we're going to switch on all fuel pumps. And we're going to switch on all the hydraulic pumps. Make sure the thrust is at idle. We're going to switch off the packs in a few seconds. In fact, we're going to switch off the packs now. Nope, that's not off. That's not off. There we go, the packs are off. We're going to watch this pushback, I guess. at this it's a proper pushback and it's a British Airways tug if you have a look at that it's got the British Airways logo on it that's okay. really awesome all doors and hatches are closed ready to connect right it's ready to connect now all our, all the lights that we need to have on are on there's our beacon light right there. We've got our nav lights on. We've got our logo light on. We've got all the lights that we currently need. Now, I don't know whether we're going to see this lift the nose at, at any point. Yep, there you go. Look, it's actually lifting the nose correctly. That's awesome to see. So it lifts the nose wheel up and then it's going to drag it around. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Okay. Parking brake released. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Right, we're not going to start the engine until we're, we're pushed back properly. But you have to admit, that's awesome to see. I don't think I've seen anything quite... This is actually the first time I've used uh, better pushback. But um, hopefully you guys think that that's pretty, pretty cool. So there you have it. What's that at the bottom? And why is that there? I've never actually noticed that. What is that and why is it there? That looks like something that should have been removed. Hmm. Little bit, little bit concerned. Empty airports, absolutely empty airport at the moment. Right. We'll just wait for the pushback to end. In fact, in the meantime, we're going to do this. Uh, I suppose we could, in theory, start. We could, in theory, start the engines. But anyway, 
Right, uh, we're going to verify 30 PSI. Now, this is something that I've never worked out because I never seem to get 30 PSI on this. Now, I've got two showing 15. I don't know whether that's what it means. Uh, both of them are 15 and 15, therefore we get 30 PSI. And if it does mean that, then, you know, that's, that's absolutely fine. Right, ignition selector, we're going to... Um, what is this? I think we'll go to that one. We'll do the left and we'll start the right engine. Once this is ready to go. And we shall we shall be ready to leave very, very soon. Now Operation hopefully we remember complete. everything. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. Disconnecting toes, stand by. Okay. You can actually see the nose coming down. That's awesome. And I think at this point, we should probably say that 40 minutes we've started, we've got this aircraft ready to go. So, 40 minutes, the aircraft is ready to go. Just waiting for him to drive off. Uh, disconnect and hand signals, yes please. Um, I don't know where the hand signals are going to be coming from. I'm looking around, I'm trying to find a, a person. You're backing off, right? Yep, you have backs off. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll Hand see you next right. time and have a safe flight. Understood. Thank you very much for your help. Alright, so we're looking for a hand signal on the right. So I suppose we'd be uh, looking out this window. I don't see anybody with a hand signal. Oh wait, he's stopped. Is somebody going to get... Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. It's time for us to start the engines. Right, everything is ready to go. We're going to start right engine first.